All right, welcome to day 56 of our journey to platinum here in Elden Ring. Uh, in this series, we are going through and working to be the most thorough environmental playthrough that you will ever see of this game, down to even collecting each individual piece of crafting materials throughout the environment. So it's super tedious, super slow going, but it's just a chance for us to, to hang out, enjoy the game together, escape from reality for a while, and, uh, and just dive deep into the environment. So today what we're going to do is go through this section of wood surrounding the Revenger's Shack, uh, and then move up this way. I'm basically just going to get as far as I can on this western uh, side of Liurnia. So yesterday, we kind of did this section down here, uh, part of the converted tower, because I already done some of that another day, the roads and catacombs, the Erd tree. So today we're just going to keep working our way along here and uh, collecting absolutely everything in the process. So let's make this happen. So as I've been mentioning the past few days on and off here and there, uh, I've mentioned that we're getting close to the three or the four belfries. I Until we get there, I don't remember what it is. If it's three belfries, if it's four belfries, regardless, uh, we're getting close to there. And I'm excited to get there because of the fact that those belfries get you to a couple of places that uh, either A, I, th I think it's some of them, like a couple of them do this, a couple of them do do, th do that. So basically like uh, with a couple of them, they take you to places that you can't get to unless you go through uh, the belfries. And uh, the specific one I'm thinking of is the Chapel of Anticipation. You can't get there unless you go through the belfry that leads you there. Uh, so that's super cool that we'll be able to get over to the Chapel of Anticipation finally. And, uh, and then also, uh, a couple of the other ones take you to, to areas that I, I, from what I remember, I think you might be able to get to them just through the environment, through exploring and stuff, but it just, you wouldn't get to them as quickly. But again, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm talking with, like, take that with a grain of salt, because it's been a while since I've played through this part of the game. So I don't remember exactly where each of the Belfries leads you, but we're getting real close. We're getting closer and closer every time we play uh, to that area. And we're also getting closer and closer to wrapping up Liurnia. We've been in Liurnia for quite a while. And the main reason for that is because, as you're seeing right now, in order to make this this thorough of an environmental playthrough, I've got to be super, super tedious with the way that I approach this. So lots of lots of backtracking and, and, and looking through the same area again to make sure we got all the crafting materials and things like that. So it's slow going, but it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so there's also uh, further up the map. I don't know if you noticed this circle. I can't remember what that is. I, I don't know if that's a... Oh, wait a second. Is that going to be an Everjail? Maybe that's what the... I can't remember. Maybe that's what the Everjails look like before you actually discover them. I don't know why I didn't think that that's what they looked like prior to Discovery, but maybe that is. So maybe that's just an Everjail that's that's up there. So that would be cool. Because I haven't been able to do an Everjail in a hot minute. It's been a little while since since we've come across an Everjail. Uh, and here on this, this western side of Liurnia... Uh, as I was saying yesterday, I feel like this whole area is a lot... Uh, I went th down through this yesterday. This whole area is a lot more extensive here on the left side than, than I thought it was. Because I was saying how this side is... It's super it's super thin uh, east to west. But in terms of north to south, I feel like it's pretty long since it stretches the entirety of Liurnia. So it's pretty crazy. So we got a lot left to do. Another cool view of Rhea Lucaria. And you can see the birds flying. That's pretty cool. It's, it's an interesting touch. I think I just saw all of them fade into non-existence, though, unless those weren't supposed to be birds. I don't know. I've never noticed that they kind of just fade into nothing like that. You know, which makes me think about... Uh, I've, I've, I've talked about this briefly, like, many, many episodes ago. Uh, how there's... I'm, I know that there's multiple accounts on YouTube that do similar stuff to this. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure all of them kind of have their own spin on it, but a specific one that I've watched in, in this particular genre is the an account called uh, She Says or something like that, I, I think is what his name is uh, on the platform, and he, he basically makes videos uh, in a series called Boundary Break, and so he'll go into a game 
with a modified camera where you can basically go through and take the camera anywhere and see stuff outside the boundaries, see stuff, uh, see stuff maybe that isn't necessarily outside the boundaries, but that might happen in an area that you're not really going to see directly as a player. Like you might see it, but it's going to be something that's sort of obscured by other things. And, uh, and so those are always super cool to watch. So the bird thing made me think of him because in a lot of those videos, he, he'll take the camera over to wherever birds are flying. And it's interesting because a lot of times all that birds are in games is just like a 2d, it's like a 2d flat texture, uh, that essentially looks like origami, honestly, once you get up to it. But when you're far away, you would never know. Like it just, it just looks like a bird. Um, flying through the environment so it's always interesting to see the way that developers set stuff like that up and the way that there's there's at times certain things certain objects in the environment that even have text written on them uh one text written on them that that you would never know and it's like a way that the developers communicate with each other so that they can keep everything straight and the reason why i'm thinking about that right now is because i just watched uh, one of his Boundary Break episodes the other day about uh, Detroit Become Human, which is a game I've never played before. I've always been kind of interested in playing it, but uh, in it, there's a police station that when you visit the police station in the game, you never, in this particular moment, you never get to see the outside of it, but then if you take the camera outside with uh, within Boundary Break, uh, you, you see that there's actually text on the front of the police station, so it's like, alright, well, why would they, why would they even put that there, um, if the player's never gonna see it, and I'm gonna sneeze, <coughs> excuse me, um, so, it's, I, I saw someone in the comments who's, who's worked in development before, said that, essentially, the reason that they do that is so that developers can communicate with each other, even though the player's not gonna see it, oh, my goodness, <laughs> Even, my goodness, I apologize. Lots of sneezing happening for me. Even though the player's never going to see it, um, they put it there so that they, within the development stages, can be like, it can see that, that object and know what it is. Uh, and not necessarily have to all be in the same room for every little piece of the project. Which I think is interesting. So it's always cool seeing that kind of stuff and how, how a game comes together. And I know there's, I, I want to watch more videos about the making of Elden Ring, because I know there's some good videos out there about the production of this game. And I'd be really interested when it comes to just a game of this sheer size. I mean, it's it's a colossal game. So it'd be interesting to, to kind of see how they how they did things and just how they kept things straight, I guess. Like, how do you how do you keep everything that's going on in this game straight and not not like lose control of all right this person's doing this this is happening here charles hey buddy i know i love you so much but you can't put your hand your face on my controller um the uh yeah so just how do you not lose control of uh of what's going on it's just so much to keep straight so anyway that's that's my little rant while we go through and or not really a rant, but just that's that's what I'm thinking about as we go through and explore and grab every last thing in the environment. So I think these woods are pretty much done. I've I've checked through these pretty thoroughly. Went down and killed killed land octopus friend. Uh, is this a is this just light? What is this? Oh, it's blood. It looks like it's some blood, some gray blood. I was thinking it was gonna be a glowing skull. It it was not. I did see, yeah, here's a glowing skull right here, though. So, not that that thing that I was looking at on the map that looked like it was possibly a uh, Everjail is right right up the way here, right up the path. We're getting pretty close to to where it's at, so we'll see pretty soon if that's actually what it is. Oh, look, and there's some, uh, some tarnished golden sunflowers. Don't mind if I do. Thanks so much. So, my, my upload schedule is all weird right now. Um, I'm trying to get everything back on, on track. I, I post every single day, uh, and lately it's it's been every single day I post an episode of this Journey to Platinum here in Elden Ring, and an episode of Minecraft Survival. 
And uh, the goal originally was to have a consistent time every day that each of those went up. But it's it's more so just been as long as they like they go up every day. So I'm not as concerned about the specific time. So I'm trying to work that out. But I say all that to say that uh, this, even though it'll probably go up in the middle of the night, as a lot of my videos have been, uh, the uh, I'm recording this on July 3rd the evening of July 3rd, and it'll probably go up after midnight, so it'll technically be July 4th. Uh, yes, it is an Everjail. Look at that. Okay. And you can probably also hear Charles flipping out downstairs. Uh, and that was actually what I was going to say. Is It's July 3rd, so some fireworks and stuff have started going off, and Charles has never heard fireworks before. Uh, it's only... So he's right now right about... He's right about 11 months old, just just a little under 11 months, and uh, and so poor thing. As the fireworks started going off, at first he was just barking. He was just barking like crazy, and I kind of like I took him to the window and I sat there and, and we could actually see him from where we were at because I live right near a park that does uh, a fireworks display each year. So I think they were just kind of like testing some stuff, and uh, and so you can see him from my front window, and so I sat with him and kind of just like reassured him that there's nothing to be scared of and. Uh, just kind of, kind of tried to ease his mind a little bit. So he eventually stopped barking, but then poor thing just kind of sat at my feet, pressed right up against me for the next, like, 30, 45 minutes as all these loud noises, uh, went off outside the house. So I feel bad for him. It's like I'm, I'm trying to, to, I'm trying to not make a super big deal of it because it's, I've, dogs are very similar to, especially puppies are very similar to kids where it's like, if you make a big deal out of something, it's going to stress them out more. Oh, I hear one of those things singing. Uh, if you make a big deal, it's going to stress them out more because they, they're they going to sort of feed off of your stress and anxiety and things like that. So I'm just sort of essentially pretending like it's not happening. And just as certain noises happen, going, oh, that was interesting, wasn't it? Or that was cool. Just trying to reinforce that it's not a big deal. And so I'm hoping that my little guy will be pretty relaxed uh, tomorrow when fireworks are really going off. And I think I hear them going off again right now. I think that's why he's barking. Uh, let's see. So there's this last glowing skull here. All right. So all of this section is done then. So right up to this edge, I would say. Uh, and there's probably a grace not far past here. Whoa. Did they just hit that? That's weird. Why did that just start rolling? Yeah, I feel like we've got to be getting close to a grace. Actually, you know what? It might be over here, like at the foot of the Belfries. So let's go into the Everjail real fast. Uh, I feel like it would be a good idea to get this done now while I'm right here. Cuckoo's Everjail. And I'm not concerned about my runes, obviously, uh, considering the fact that with Everjails, the runes will just drop outside. So it is not of any concern to me. You know, those blue worm things that are showing up in the new load screens look like those creatures that are next to the Everjails. I haven't played the DLC yet, though, so I don't know what the blue worm creatures even are. Oh, it's just... It's just this guy. Let me heal real fast. I do pretty significant damage to him, so... Oh, he's got... He's got that thing. That is... That is a special power you got there. Woo! Get out of there. Ooh, that was close. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I feel so over-leveled right now. It's ridiculous. And that last one, I got bleed on him, so it took the rest. Great Blade Phalanx. And you get 4,600 for that. That's pretty good. 4,600 for 30 seconds of work. Not too bad. Poor Charles barking at the, at the fireworks. Ooh, and I do actually... So that gave me enough now to where I, I have just enough to level uh why did this respawn does stuff respawn after you go do crafting materials respawn after you go into an ever jail if they do i was not aware of that uh yeah so again with with charles don't think that i'm i don't i don't want anyone to think that i'm ignoring him i just know that he's not in any danger he's totally fine and so i'm just kind of like I said, right now taking the approach of not making a big deal out of it and sort of just letting him learn that 
there's nothing like there's nothing that's gonna hurt him. It's, he's totally fine. And I mean, he knows that if there was something that could hurt him, I'd protect him from it. He more barks just to warn me of danger. Uh, but with this, there is no danger, so I'm not really reacting. Uh, and hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully, that's the right way to do it. This is this is my first dog, so I'm still even now. Got him when he was about a little over two months old, so even now, like nine months into having him, I'm still learning aspects of how to do certain certain bits of training. Like, there's things that, that he just hasn't encountered yet. Like I said, like he had never encountered fireworks really until tonight, so it's sort of a learning curve for him and I about uh, what's best for him. So anyways... Uh, so that, yeah, so I can see the Belfries, and I see four, so I feel like it must be four, because I, the only reason why I've been wondering if it's only three is because, maybe the reason why I'm wondering if it was only three is because I think there was a three Belfries place in Dark Souls 2, so maybe I'm just confusing that in my brain. That could literally be all it is, to be honest. Maybe, it, maybe there's no other reason other than that. Uh, alright, so let's go in and deal with singing singing lady can't remember what these are called can you stop that thanks so much appreciate it Ooh, gold rune six from her and an arteria leaf the singing is unsettling i will i will say that for freaking sure the singing definitely is unsettling and does not does not bring me a lot of comfort kind of makes me feel like kind of makes me feel like some sort of ritualistic cult is about to come walking out of the woods or something uh which is terrifying so the uh so there was what was i oh yeah so i think i was just talking yesterday about how my my brother and i we like to play through uh the spider-man games and we'll go through and, and just work towards uh like, 100% completion and platinum and things like that. Like, he'll come over periodically for whichever Spider-Man game we happen to be on. And, uh, we've been... The other day we were playing... I think it was The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I've sort of lost track of... Since we haven't played all of them, I've lost track of, like, which ones are which. It's the one that has both Peter Parker and, uh, Miles Morales in it. Where you can basically switch between the two. Which has been super cool so far. Uh, I like the mechanic, uh within the game i think it's pretty neat but it the the whole cult thing made me think of the fact that it's interesting that there's some sort of like we haven't made it that far into the game yet so we don't really know what the whole storyline is but there's some sort of like weird cult that is branding people in the streets and uh and you kind of go and stop them from committing crimes and things like that it's it's weird it's kind of creepy like, it's, it's kind of dark for a, for a Spider-Man thing, to be honest. Even though they take it in a very lighthearted way, so far from what we've seen in the game. Like, it's not like you're witnessing the rituals or, or anything like that. But it's just, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Like, the, the whole idea of a cult is a bit dark for a Spider-Man game. Sort of more something that you would expect in, like, Batman, I feel like. Uh... So anyway, that's my story about that. We'll see. We'll see what happens when we actually get further into it. But we, uh, with, with uh, just the Spider-Man Miles Morales game, the one that was that was just focused around him, uh, probably like maybe a year and a half ago or two years, something like that. Uh, when I was, hang on, let me see here. I still need to be doing strength. Oh, and that's actually increasing my katana's damage decently okay i like that very much i guess it's because i mean my katana scales with doesn't it scale with both decks and yeah it scales with decks and strength just a lot more with decks or maybe not a lot more but you know what i'm saying you know what i'm getting at but yeah like uh not not long after the miles morales game came out uh when i was still living in uh an apartment uh, before I bought this house, uh, my so I, I say that because I think that was about a year and a half ago or so when he would have been over maybe two years. Uh, he came over, we started playing through the game, and a lot of times our intention would be like I wouldn't I would take off of work or whatever the next day, uh, or it would just be like a Friday into a Saturday or something like that, and we would work to to see if we could basically hundred percent the game 
in one night. And so with that one specifically, I think we managed to. I think we ended up playing like 16 hours worth. We just kind of, we, we started late at night and then woke up in the morning and, and finished it up. Or, or by that point, it was probably early afternoon when we actually woke up since we had been up all night. Uh, and uh, managed to play like 16 hours in the course of the time that he was there. And uh, and managed to pretty much 100% the game all at once. And, and in that game, some of the time trials in that game are ridiculous. Oh my goodness, that's what took us so long through a lot of it, was the time trials were just crazy. There's one in Central Park that just... My goodness... You could, I think we sat there, and he was the one that finally beat it, I think. Uh, it finally got three stars, because it was all about, again, we were trying to 100% and get certain trophies and stuff. And so I think he was the one that beat it. And it was probably like three hours that it took us just to do that one time trial. There are a lot of crabs around here, or, or lobsters. What happens if I, what happens if I hit his belly? Is this, I can't tell if... Maybe that did a little more damage. I can't really tell if his belly's weaker or not. I don't really know. Ooh, I am stuck on a log. Dang. So I've I've obviously through this whole area, I've been fighting these on horseback. Oh, that hurts a lot. But I feel like I've probably been doing it wrong. I feel like off of horseback is probably the way to go. I don't know, so as I as I slash through this group of them, I guess I'll try off of horseback as much as possible. Yeah, see, I don't think that did any more damage on his back than it does on his stomach. So that's kind of whatever. That poke is freaking annoying. Dang it, man. Frick. heal real fast. I think you get a, you probably get a flashback after you fight each of these, I would imagine. But I, I can't say that for sure. Don't you, dang it, I know I'm just not doing good with my timings, but it's just because, I think it's just because these piss me off and I get really impatient. So do I get a flashback? No, I do not. So it's probably after I, it might be after I kill all of them. Strip of white flesh. There's one that's, okay, so that one's walking around. So I just need to do this very carefully. Uh, and let's see. Let's pull out, I guess, this. Maybe pull him over with this. And I hope that the other one... Oh, that's right. I always forget they can do that. That's so annoying. Yeah, do that. Do that. That's, that's cool. Okay, I'm going to go back to two-handed. Okay. I got this. I got this. Man, the step back with that, that's a that's an interesting attack because of the fact that he like pokes you and then steps back so you can't even get a hit on him. Okay, and I'm out of FP right now. I mean I can I've got more Karulian, but I just Alright, now I can I'm gonna drink that real fast. Get that back. Luckily this guy didn't come in and get in the middle of the fray. So wait, so it's him, and it looks like maybe just that one up there, unless I'm missing one, unless there's one I'm not seeing. But I think it's just these two left, from what I can tell. And But there's probably, there might be some underneath the water, like in the sand, that are going to pop up. I would not be surprised about that. Alright, Mr. Krabs. Or not, I always call him Krabs, Mr. Lobster. Larry the Lobster. Dang, man. You're no joke. You're feisty. Would you just jump and poke and get your poker stuck in the ground, please? I'd appreciate that very much. Ooh, that I almost dang it. Are you really are you you really are you for reals? You're way bigger than me and you're jumping away like a coward. Dang it. Crap, I gotta heal real bad. Man. Okay, he's gonna poke. Yep. Dang it, I always try to get a hit with that, and I shouldn't. I shouldn't. You know what I should do, though? I should do this. For these last couple. Just take care of him the coward's way. 
I didn't even need that last one. All right. Sweet. So it should just be this last guy over here. It's crazy that you don't get your flasks back. Uh, at all. And it, it, like I said, it'll probably be after I kill this one. So I'm going to fight this one on horseback. Because it'll give me a little more freedom to... Oh, and there is... I knew it. I knew there was going to be one that was going to show up. Like that. I don't want to fight both of them at once, and I know they're... Yeah, I got to zigzag, because I know they're going to shoot those things at me. And I think those have a ridiculous amount of range. Okay, so I need to just pull one out at a time. I, I, I don't think that it's wise to fight both at once, if I'm being totally honest with you. Uh, they are stuck on each other. Let's do... Let's, let's do some of this. Pull this guy out. If I can even hit him from here. Can I hit you? I can hit him from here. Unless, I guess he's just going to sit there, though. You can you can stay there. I mean, it doesn't bother me. If you let me kill you like this, I don't have any issue with that. I always forget that using your, your sorceries also uses a lot of stamina. Boom. All right. I'm going to drink this now. And... This is the, this should be the last guy. And now that I think about it, the funny thing is, I guess I'm going through and doing this, but I'm not planning on going all the way through these woods right now, so I might, be, might just be wasting my time, because I really want to go up to the belfries. So, I'm just kind of doing this, and then we're, we're basically going to go to the edge of the woods and then turn around. So, this might be a huge waste of time. Uh, I need to use this last flask, because my, my health is not good. There you go. There you go. Missed him. Alright. Alright, Larry the Lobster. There better not be any more of your friends popping up out of here. Oh, crap. I wasn't close enough. I probably could have... Oh, I could probably still take him down. I got him. I got him. So, did I get any flashback after all that? I do. I get... Okay, so I got all three of my Cerulean flasks back and only three of my HP... That's fine, though. That's six flasks. That's not bad for what you get back. So, yeah, what I wanted to do is really just get to the edge of where this land goes right now. Because uh, I figure we can do the rest of this another time. But then, does this land... Actually, this land might... Does it reach all the way? Yeah, so this land goes all the way around. So, maybe we'll go just right to where this, like, hairpin is right here uh is this where it's at yeah it's basically like right here where these rocks are I'll, I'll just go on the land up to here work our way backwards towards the belfries and then we can check the remainder of of this stuff down here another day probably probably when i'm down here going through these woods i'll check this land that's actually pressed up against the the water I just, as usual, I just do that so that I can keep straight what we've what we've already 100%ed and checked the entire environment thoroughly and what we haven't. Because if I don't set those boundaries in my mind, then there's going to be no way I'm going to remember what we've gone through and what we haven't. And then I'm going to either A, go back through areas multiple times, uh, or B, I'm just not even going to go through an area at all and we're going to miss stuff. So... So just work our way back towards the belfries and then go up there, check those out. And I'm I'm hoping so the the thing is because because each one needs a I can't I don't know why I can't remember what they're called. It's it's a stone sword key, but it's like the magical version of it. So I don't remember if it's like a glint stone uh if it's like a glint stone sword key or something like that. I don't I don't know. Um so, I can't really, re I don't, I don't know how many of them are actually up there. Like, I think you get one of the special keys up there to access one, and then I'll have to come back later. So, what I'd really like is to be able to access the Chapel of Anticipation, but I don't know which one it is, so I'm kind of going to have to guess. Uh, but, it'd be sweet if we could go there today, but I don't know if we're going to be able to. So, I'm just going to kind of have to take a wild guess if there's even a key available up there like i said and that's that's a big if because i can't really remember it's been so so long since i've gone through this area so i was every now and then i mean every time i finish one of these episodes i of course 
I exit the game as you do. Like you, you of course, even though you don't really save, you still to make sure that nothing gets lost. You go into your menu, like with most FromSoft games, and actually go over and quit to main menu. At least that's how I've always done it. Uh, so of course, every time I'm done with an episode, I see where we're at with the save file, and I'm at like 52 hours right now in this save file. So we have we've spent a lot of time already in this series just thoroughly checking environments and going through and making sure that we don't miss any sort of npc dialogue and stuff like it's it's been real thorough so far we spent a lot of time on this on this character so and we still got a lot left to go that's what's crazy that's why i say that is all that time that's been spent and there's still a ton more to do so let me let's rest here and we will head up towards the belfries i think uh, there's also that way over there where those those jelly, ghost jellyfish are at. And I think just past them is a grace. So I'm tempted to run over and grab that next grace, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to worry about this right now and head, head up the mountain towards the belfries. And then we can afterwards head over towards the jellyfish. Because that's less important right now. The belfries are awaiting. And, uh, and so, yesterday when we were at the spot where we were sort of down beneath the cliff, I think it was, I think it was right, yeah, it was like right over here. Uh, so that spot where I think we're right below the Moonlight Altar. Yesterday where there was that whole thing where it, it looked like the, the area maybe wasn't uh, set up exactly right. So you end up, uh, it ends up sort of thinking that you're in or by the Moonlight Altar when you're not actually there. Uh, so then, like, the sky changes and all that. So that, I was thinking about it and how the Moonlight Altar is something that... I didn't remember this from my first playthrough, but according to the wiki, you have to get pretty far into Ronnie's questline before getting up there. Uh, so I think... I was trying to remember when the next time is that I really encounter her. And I feel like it's soon, but I don't totally remember. Uh, it's definitely, I mean, it's definitely got to be somewhat soon. Uh, but I don't remember exactly how her quest line works. So the reason I did end up running over here is because I noticed that this opening here is pretty wide. So I wanted to sort of explore up to here real fast. That way, uh, everything surrounding, surrounding like the entrance to the path was done real fast before we actually head up there towards the belfries. I thought that... Might make life a little bit easier. Hello there. Just gonna promptly squish your face in. What you got here? Ooh, the jellyfish shield. I've seen that shield. Uh, but I've never used it before. I think it has some sort of thing where you, you dump, like, jellyfish juice on your head and it gives you a buff. But, this is a no-shield playthrough, so I will not be utilizing that. Oh man, the fireworks are... I don't know if you can hear that. Probably can't really hear it in the recording, but the fireworks are really going off right now. Just, just briefly there. I don't know. Uh, so in in Buffalo, or really in in New York, uh, fireworks are technically like recreational use fireworks or whatever you'd call them. Like the average person owning fireworks is technically illegal, I believe. I know some of the laws have changed here and there. Like there was a while where it was like, no matter what. The, like the law was that if you're not licensed for fireworks or something you have no business owning them which i think is so stupid but that was how it was for a while and then it sort of switched to where it was something like for part of the year you could you could use fireworks like i think maybe surrounding the fourth of july they were legalized briefly or something because technically you can buy smaller versions of fireworks now in New York State, but again, I think it's only for a brief period. It's not year-round. So, overall, it's just, it's so silly because for the most part, like, the cops, they they'll, they might show up, like, if there's a noise complaint or something, and maybe go and, and just, like, tell you to stop. But if you're not doing anything that's harming anyone, the cops are also just going to be like, whatever. Like, it doesn't, they're just having fun. Who cares? So, it's so silly to me that in New York State, uh, fireworks are, are essentially just straight up, I, uh, it's, it's basically just straight up a no. And I, I think that's so dumb, because what's, I get it, they can be dangerous. One time, well, I'll tell you that in a second. I get it, they can be dangerous, but 
I just don't see the point in having it where there's absolutely no, like, there's no wiggle room. Uh, but again, like I said, the cops give you give you wiggle room. They don't they don't really care. Uh, and a lot of times they won't even come and talk to you. Like if you've stopped shooting them off when they pass by to check up on the area, a lot of times like they know where it's coming from. They know which house, but they just decide to just I don't know. They just kind of drive by so that you see them, and then they go on with their night. Uh, but when I said that fireworks can be dangerous, I mean sure they can be. Um, but I remember. Probably, what was this, maybe two years ago, uh, I had some some just bottle rockets. I had had them forever. I just had, because technically I think bottle rockets, I don't, I don't know that those are against the law in New York State. Even if they are, I don't care because it's a bottle rocket. But I, I had had them for a long time, and I just kind of kept them, I don't know, just kind of kept them in a bag and uh, didn't really have any use for them. But then one day, my brother and I, decided to at my parents house go outside and shoot some of them off and what we started doing was that, so of course the way that bottle rockets work is you've got like the actual uh the actual explosive part on the head of it uh oh and i just loop back to where i've been I, I think i'm getting confused oh yeah but there's still stuff here that i didn't pick up uh so the, the head of it is of course where the actual explosion comes from and what propels it and everything and then you've got the the stick that's attached to it and then if you do it right like you stick it in a bottle and then it propels itself out uh, and so we what we ended up doing is we took the sticks off of them and just just took the explosive head of it where the actual I don't know what you would call it I, I'm sure there's a technical term it's probably not just the explosive head of it I don't know uh, we, we took those off and we would light just that and then throw them at each other. Well, the problem is when the, where the, the, like, uh, wick is at, it's pretty close to where it explodes. So we'd have to light it and throw it at each other really, really fast. And one of them, I did not, uh, I did not throw it fast enough. Slash, I, I think it was... Like, I threw it just as fast as any of the other ones that, that we had done, but I think that one was slightly defective because it, it blew up way faster than all the other ones had. And so I was holding it between my between my thumb and pointer finger, getting ready to throw it at him. I lit it, and it was like, spoom! Like, I, it's barely, barely stayed lit before it exploded. So it, it blew up between my two fingers. My thumb and my index finger went totally numb. Like, I... I could, I guess really what I could feel though, maybe, maybe numb isn't the best way to say it, but my fingers were like vibrating. And at first I was afraid, before I looked, I was afraid I'd blown my fingers off or something. Uh, and then of course quickly realized I hadn't, but then, uh, but then what I was worried about is I was like, am I, is this feeling in my fingers ever going to go away? Like, this is crazy. So we haven't done that since, uh, of course. So, we definitely learned a good lesson there. I would do it again, but I would just be more safe about it this time. Look at this view. That's a really good view. So, I'm just trying to work my way methodically up this hill. That's why I'm sort of going back and forth, trying to make sure I collect everything. We've got a couple of these huge... Uh, I already forgot what they're called, and we just fought one in the Everjail a little bit ago. But these, like, huge glintstone trolls up here and I think I I'm recognizing I'm remembering this area a little bit as we walk through it and I remember that there's quite a few of these up here I believe so let's do this so let's go I guess this side of the path first since this is what will actually lead us up to the belfries so we'll go we'll go on this side and make sure that all of this is totally and completely and thoroughly picked over as we head up towards the belfries, and then we can come back down and uh, and do the stuff on the other side of the path. Think that it sounds like a, it sounds like a good plan. It sounds like a real good plan. Uh, I don't know this area up here. There's a lot more to it than just the than just the belfries. Uh, so I don't know what else we're gonna encounter. I don't think that there's a cave or anything up here necessarily. I think it's mostly just enemies and some items leading up to the belfries, but I guess I guess we'll see as we go. 
And where is... I already lost... Oh, yeah. Okay, so the path loops... Oh, loops through over here, I guess. There is a... Is this glowing skull? Sure is. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate the skull of glowing. Uh, and then I want to fight... I want to fight this guy real fast and see how much of a threat he is. Probably not much. I mean, he's got... He's got some health, for sure. It's, that's for sure. You've got some health, don't you, pal? And you're just gonna go on your temper tantrum. You do what you gotta do. I won't stop you. Even though stopping you is exactly what I'm trying to do, but it's alright. You don't need to know that. Man, I'm, not, I'm totally out of stamina. Because I'm just spam hitting. There we go. That's what I was working towards. Alright. Yeah, he's not He's not much of a threat. He's definitely got health, for sure, but he's not, he's not bad. I'm not overly concerned about those guys. That will be... A-OK -okay as we fight through here. And we've got some gold-tinged excrement, as there is in all of the woods throughout this game. Lots of excrement. Except in the watery woods, down in the, 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 like, pond or, or lake of Liernia. See, the thing is, I, I feel like it's never really, unless I'm, unless I'm forgetting something, I feel like it's never really talked about what the water portion is called because it's such a big area it's not like it's labeled anywhere so it's not i feel like it's never talked about if it's lake liernia if it's swamp liernia like i don't i don't know that's why i've just always called it lake even though it's super shallow so i feel like you might not really be able to call it a lake but i don't really care because that's what i've deemed it as is a lake so, we're almost through this side of the path, leading up to the Belfries. So, I'm just trying to go through and make sure we get everything walking up there. Uber environmental exploration. And, uh, and we'll see, we'll see what we can actually accomplish up there. Like I said, I don't, I don't even know how much we'll be able to do right now. Uh, because of the fact that I don't know how many keys are up there. If any. So, man, do you hear those fireworks? Sounds like Charles has definitely chilled out, which is good. He seems to be fine now. But every time... There's been a couple times when they've gone off, specifically the ones that are going off right now, whatever type that is, it sounds just like someone knocking on the door, so I keep thinking someone's... I keep thinking someone's at my front door, and then realize that it's just more fireworks going off. And, you know, that's the other thing about New York State with them having issues with fireworks. Uh... Wow, this is a... Look at this view. Wow. Look at that. That is awesome. I love it so much. So, so much. Five out of... Five out of five. Uh, yeah, so the other thing with New York State, with, with there technically being an issue with fireworks, no one... Unless it's, like, a really uptight person or just maybe an old person or whatever no one really is going to call the cops on you for using fireworks everyone sort of protects each other and just kind of goes i'm not i'm not calling the police i won't say anything if you won't see it, say anything because it's like they're fireworks i mean come on oh that's gonna hit me hit me twice or really it hit torrent twice oh shoot oh my goodness wow so one it so all right so when that lands, it is no joke. Holy crap. Yeah, when that lands, that's... That is a big deal. Uh, so I, I gotta... Maybe respect those guys a little more than I thought I did. I'm gonna try to skip past this first one, though, since I've... Ooh, actually, let me collect these real fast, though. Uh, this, this first one that's over here, I'm just gonna try to ignore him. I don't know where he spawns at but I don't really oh he's over there so yeah I can pretty much just run past him and go up to where the other guy was so they're pretty much they're super easy as long as that particular attack I guess as long as that does not make contact you're probably fine and these just appear yeah they appear out of nowhere so let's get a couple hits here while he stomps around and I you gotta be real cautious to not let that land again because that was that was wild, and I need to be, like, more careful about actually, like, where I'm swinging, because I feel like I'm swinging, and I'm not even making contact a lot of times. 
He was getting ready to do his sword thing. His glintstone sword in the air thing. But I didn't let that happen. Not going to happen. Are you going to drop anything? He's not going to drop anything. Okay. So, did I check? I think I checked all this down to these these rocks. So, this is fine. Oh, yeah, I did. Because I was, I was looking at the view. I was looking at the, the view of Rhea Lucaria from right here. Uh, and I don't think... I can't remember if there's anything else patrolling towards the top here. I feel like he's the last one, because we're getting so close to it, I don't, I don't feel like there would really be anything else living up here. Uh, just because I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a grace, and there's always, like, a certain amount of space between a grace and, uh, and any sort of enemies. So I, th I think he's probably the last one towards the top. But I guess we'll see. We will see indeed. Right, let me check this little outcropping here. Just just a shroom. Just some LSD sitting on the edge of the outcropping. Pick it up. Feed it to Torrent. Torrent, Torrent will start seeing all the pretty colors. Uh, the four belfries. So it is the four. It has been confirmed. There's Mount Gelmer. And then... Isn't... I don't know why, like, I'm not remembering super well bits and pieces of, of where the capital technically starts, or where the, the Altus Plateau starts, because I think right there above my head, where that, that, like, towery thing is, that wall, I think right behind that, I think is where the Altus Plateau starts, but I could be totally wrong about that, because I don't really remember. It's been a while since I've been over there, and, and explored that, so... Anything back here? Anything? So this shows... Uh, oh, wait, no, because that's... Hang on a second. That's actually... That's this. So this is what I'm thinking of. So that's actually over there, right? Unless that... No, that's the lift. So... Altus Plateau is up there, now that I think about it. Because this over here, that's all part of Carrion Manor. That's right. Okay, I was getting that... Very confused. Much confusion in my brain about that one. It's a tough one, but I worked it out. Uh, yeah, I think it's because of the fact that I just haven't been through here in so long. I can't fully gauge anymore where everything is until we until we get there. Like, I have a general idea, but then sometimes from a distance I see something and I go, Okay, well, yeah, that makes sense, and then... When I start thinking about it, I go, but it, it actually doesn't make sense. Like, it, it that that wouldn't line up with what I know of the world. So, the world of Elden Ring. Uh, Alright, all of these bushes are good. We're almost up here to the belfries. We've got these transport gates that we're going to start, start trying to take. And actually, now that I think about it, I wonder... I don't know why I said it like that. Actually... I, I wonder if I have picked up any of the special stone sword keys. And maybe I just don't remember. I don't think I have, though. Uh, I believe you get your first one up here. And then just, just checking, just checking back here, seeing, seeing what we got. Seeing what we got on the back side. Oh yeah, so that... So this little area here, some of this is where this path... Oh yeah, so this path going this way leads back down. So we can go this lower section where those jellyfish were right here at like this fork. Or we can also go down here along this path right below the belfries. So uh, I'm mean, obviously I'll, I'll take both. Like I'll, I'll walk through both because just thoroughness, you know? 100%. But we could we could take either one. So let me see. Oh, that's right. So you know what? These messages give little hints about uh, about where each one will take you. So I actually should be able to figure out what each one is. So this one, Crumbling Lance. Okay, so that goes to Fair Missoula. And Fair Missoula is like an, an end game. Oh, that's what it's called. An imbued, imbued stone, or no, imbued sword key. So, Pharaoh Missoula is, like, endgame stuff. So, it's interesting that there's a Belfry that'll take you there. Uh, because that is... That's basically 
in my mind, the second to last area you should do in the entire game. I, I would say that that doing the Halig tree first, or, uh, or I'm sorry, doing the Halig tree absolute last is what you want to do. Uh, so you would go, you'd go Fair Missoula and then the Halig tree, in my opinion, just in terms of what I felt the difficulty was when I played through last time. Just felt like the, the Halig tree was the hardest thing the game has to offer. And I hear that the DLC is even harder than, like, the Halig Tree, which makes total sense, because that's kind of how FromSoft has always been. Look at all those birds out there. Look at those those 2D uh, paper birds, origami birds. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's sort of how From Software has always been, is their DLC is always ridiculously hard. Like, way harder than even the base game is. So, I'm, I, it's kind of weird to me that people are even surprised about it, to be honest. Uh, but, I, in the base game, I seriously think that the Halig Tree is way worse than Fair Missoula. I didn't have that much of a hard time with Fair Missoula. Even with the bosses there, I didn't think they were all that bad. Precipice of Anticipation. Okay, so this is the one that I want to open up, uh, but I don't think... I don't have an imbued key. Yeah, I don't. Okay, so that's the one that I want to open up because that'll lead to the starting area, the area that you literally spawn into the game. And I want to go get my revenge on that grafted scion. Ooh, so this gives you a good view of some of this here. So that island down there is where I've got to go fight the dragon to get the stone... or uh, the glintstone key to get into Rey Lucaria uh and then there's a bunch of these like marionette balloon things hanging around here and this is more of western Lyurnia that's that I was talking about this yesterday that section of woods there is kind of right around where those ruins are which then leads to the big blacksmith guy and then I'm pretty sure like I said I think over there then is what actually leads into Carrion Manor uh and you've got Mount Gelmer up there, and then of course you're seeing some of the, some of Altus Plateau there. I think it's what well, some of that is, and then of course that's the capital. So lots, lots more to do, and we can't even see all of the areas from here right now, because even past that is is the mountaintop of the giants, uh, and that's still, that's still a ways away as well. We still, we still got a good chunk of game before we get there. But we'll get there, don't you worry. And we'll collect every single item on the way there. It's it's gonna happen, trust me. Let me grab this grace real fast. And uh, and like I said, I could have sworn that somewhere around here they give you one stone sword key. So, or one imbued sword key, so we'll see. Uh, and I do not, yeah, I don't have the levels to level up right now. So we've got foot of the four belfries and the four belfries. Pretty unique names. You can see that Ever Jail over there that we did earlier. We've made it pretty far. Made some good progress today. Here's a camp that's past the fork in the road where those jellyfish were. So we'll go down and do that probably tomorrow. We're getting getting close to the end of the episode here. Uh, let me check all around all this. Make sure I pick up everything. And see if there is an imbued sword key somewhere around here that I can utilize. And like I said, if there is, I'm totally going to use it on... The one to get to the Chapel of Anticipation. That's that's the first one I want to check out. So if there is one, Chapel of Anticipation has dibs. But as of right now, it's not looking promising. Unless it's possibly hidden behind one of the belfries that I haven't checked yet. Because there's two. I haven't checked behind this one. It looks like there is nothing. Let me also, I need to read the... Ooh, there's five herba here though. I also need to... Uh, read the note there to see what, what that belfry leads you to. And I think all of this is, is good. All this landscape should be fine. So what is this one? Oh, wait, actually, this one doesn't lead you to anything. This one is the chest. This is probably... Yeah, perfect. Imbued sword key. So this one... I think that's why sometimes I think of it as the three belfries and not the four, actually. is because this one doesn't even have a transport gate on it. So I think sometimes I think of it as only three, even though it's technically four belfries, because the transport gate's not what makes it a belfry, it's the bells on it. Uh, so it's not really good logic to say that, well, it's only three, because there's only three transport gates, because that's not even what it means. 
but I think that's where the confusion comes in in my head. What about behind this one? Anything? Does not look like it. I believe I did see a glowing skull out front, though, so I'm going to need to go and uh, scoop that up real fast, if I can. There it is right there. Gotta check the landscape first, though. So then down here, that's around the other belfry that I already checked. That's the first one you get to. Uh, and then let's also, let's check the message on this one and see what this leads you to. Night sky unceasing. Oh, so that probably, I can't remember specifically, but I think that's what takes you maybe to, uh, I think that's what takes you to the unseen, or not the unseen city, whatever the, crap, whatever that upper area is underground above Syafra. I think it takes you there. I don't know why I can't remember what it's called at this moment in time. But I think that that's what that one's for. Alright, and then is this... Yeah, Precipice of Anticipation. Let's use this imbued sword key. Pop on in there. Go give the grafted scion a piece of my mind. Oh, <laughs> I'm just standing here like there's... Like it's just gonna take me. Alright, travel to another location. The only thing is with this, I don't know... Uh, see, that's, I think, a boss in the DLC that I don't know about since I haven't done the DLC. Yes, perfect. This is exactly what I was thinking it was. Uh, oh, shoot. I forgot about that. Well, I was just going over to grab those nascent butterflies. Did not go well, though. Uh, and I can't wait to explore that, whatever that is in the DLC. Uh, but what, I, what was I saying about that? Oh, yeah, I'm just hoping that because... The grafted scion is not... I mean, I don't think he's crazy difficult. So, I'm hoping I can get him relatively quickly. Because you know how much I hate the grafted scions. I struggle so, so much with grafted scions. It's not even funny. So, we'll see what happens here. And I'm not going to walk off the edge this time. Uh, oh, it actually... It breaks and it doesn't... It doesn't uh, reform. So, that's good, because then you can't make that mistake twice. I mean, you could. You could just be an idiot and walk off the edge, but I would I would question your intelligence if you did that. You know, another reason why... So, you obviously notice that I am always playing offline when I play this game. And the main reason it is, the main reason is because I don't want player messages to be displayed because it's I think it's more fun if you don't see any sort of hints or anything like that so if you have if you're offline you won't get player messages you also won't see blood stains so you don't see like any sort of hints about mistakes other people made and things like that so that's another thing is I feel like in areas like that where you fall off it's always kind of funny when you are playing online because there's always just a pool of blood stains in that area of just player after player making the same mistake, or of of people purposefully jumping off so that you'll see their ghost and try the same thing, and then they'll leave a message like secret ahead or whatever. People just being trolly. But that's that's I just I don't like having that in the game. I would rather it I would rather it be like no one else has played. Because I don't want to know what I, I don't want to know anything because I want it to all be a surprise. Even though I've played through the game. I just prefer to not see that stuff. Uh, Alright, so I did not mean to drink that. That was not on purpose. But, I guess... I guess here we go. Let's do this. Grafted Scion. And I've only got 7,900 runes on me, so it's not a huge deal. Dang. Oh, man. I just want to see how much damage do I do. Oh, good damage. Good damage. Dang, but see, that's the... Dodging is so difficult with this thing, I feel like. I might just I might just suck, but Oh my goodness. And it does this thing. Oh man. Oh, okay, I got bleed, I got bleed, I got bleed. Charles is trying to get in my lap though. Charles, Charles, Charles. Okay, crap. Gotcha! Nice. And with a puppy trying to get in my lap. I know, buddy, you're so cute. You're so cute. Ornamental straight sword. And Golden Beast Crest Shield. Let's check those out. I can't use the shield. So no shield run. Uh, but where was... What was the thing? Banished Knight. That's not the one. It was the ornamental... Wasn't the... Wasn't an ornamental thing? 
Oh, well, here's the shield. So that's a pretty decent shield. It's a it's a great shield. Uh, but then this this weapon that it it uses. Where the heck did that go? Because what I thought it said it was like an ornamental thing. We got wing scythe. Got that. I have no idea where it's at. Because it, there's no way it's one of these, right? One of the oh, it is. Ornamental straight sword. So it's a pretty crappy sword that it uses. I didn't realize that. It's literally just a straight sword that weighs three. Interesting. Very interesting. I don't know why I didn't realize it was such a crappy sword that it wields. But that was that was pretty simple. Not that bad. Again, I, I just don't like the grafted scions because of the fact that they just flail around. They're so difficult to... Like, just their maneuverability is ridiculous. So, because of that, I just don't enjoy fighting them. But that guy was... He was pretty simple. Because of the fact that I'm so overleveled for everything right now, it was pretty, pretty easy. But, that actually reminds me that maybe at some point soon, I should actually go down into the... Uh, that... Into the place that's right by the first step. Uh, like at the Stranded Graveyard, and actually kill the Grafted Scions that are down there now. Because when I went through there, I made the choice to just run through, grab the item, which I think was Erdtree's Blessing, and then just run away and not kill the Grafted Scions. So I feel like I should maybe... I should maybe go back now and kill them, now that I'm, I'm leveled more, and see if they actually drop anything useful. Uh, wait, so this... Oh yeah, so this... Just to show you, if you're not familiar, this is where it sent us to. So from way over here at the Four Belfries, it sent us way over here. And this is where you literally start the game at, and it's right by Stormvale. So this is Chapel of Anticipation, or Precipice of Anticipation. And uh, I'm just running around right now making sure, making sure that we check each bush. It's all a part of environmental exploration. I'm going to check absolutely everything, and it looks like... Looks like we're pretty solid here. We gotta go up into the church. And I don't think, I mean, I, technically we already walked through this at the beginning of the game, uh, but you never know if something new has spawned here, obviously. And I don't know, I don't think you even get a grace here, to be honest. I think the only way to, to reaccess this again is literally to just go back to the Belfries and and utilize the chapel or the the precipice of anticipation belfry again. Uh, so it doesn't even give you a grace. So that's that's interesting to me. It'd be kind of cool if it did, just because of the fact that then you could always come back for nostalgia to where you first started, where your journey began. And the thing is, up here at the church, this is the most important part of coming back here because we can now access different parts of it that we couldn't before. Uh, and I think though. There's nothing, yeah, there's nothing over here. That is, that is sweetenly death. And then over here, I don't think that there's anything either. I think that, yeah, this is, this is also nothing. Also certainly death. Okay, so let's go up here then. Shouldn't be anything here. I think it's one of these, one of these doors coming up is what opens. Let me actually check this wall though and make sure this isn't, it's not illusory. Kind of seems suspicious to me. It was a suspicious wall. But not all suspicious walls are actually hiding something, so just remember that. Don't don't judge a wall by its bricks. Cause if you do, then you're a jerk. Alright, and I don't think yeah, I don't think there's anything else here. So we just need to go through this door over here that should now be open. Yes, it is now open. It was closed when we were here in a prior lifetime. Uh ooh, an item. I don't even know if there's anything else to fight here, to be honest. The Stormhawking. Wait, is that... That's just a... Ash of War, right? Or a, a Spirit Ash? Or maybe not? Where is that? I feel like... So it's not this, it's not this. Uh, I Crap, I always forget to just look. It'll show me if it's like a key item or, or what it is. And I always forget. Oh, you know what? No, it's... That's right, it is a key item. Uh... Ash of a Hawk, revered by all others as sovereign back in the days when Stormvale's winds still raged like no other. This ancient monarch is proud, however, refusing to answer anyone's summons. That's right, I forgot about that because that's what we have to give to Nefeli Lu. 
So she should be back at the round table hold after we encountered her in uh in Albanar in like the Albanaric village. Uh so we gotta give that to her to progress her her quest line. So I forgot all about that. Or I just didn't remember that that's where we found this. So is there anything? Looks like there's nothing here. Can I break this? I cannot. Alright. What do we what do we got in the chest waiting for us now? Stormhawk Dean Dina Dean thing. I believe that is yeah. So that is a summon ash. And I don't think there's anything down here. This should just be literally where we started. Though the path be broken and uncertain, claim your place as Elden Lord. Alright. Alright, so this is done now. Let's do this. Let's go... I guess... Let me think. I guess let's go back to the round table hold. And, uh... Well, I, I should probably do a couple things. Whoa, why? Oh, that's right. Every That's right. This place is being invaded. Crap, don't you, don't you do it. Gotcha. I forgot all about that. I didn't realize that's when this happened. And it's all dark and everything. Great enemy felled. He's not very great. I just literally swung and swung and swung and he was gone. I, I don't know what exactly triggers that. Clinging bone. What is that? The clinging bone. I would imagine that it's got to be a weapon, right? Yeah, so horrific weapon made of a hardened skeletal arm wielded by Encha of the Royal Remains. Fitted by placing one's hands into the fist's grips until they dig in. Gosh. All clinging creature... A a king relinquishes not the hand. That's disgusting. That's so gross. Uh, Alright, so while we're here, let's talk to a few people. And just try to progress some quest lines and stuff. I don't think there's anything else I can do in here. Uh, let me see. She's going to talk about it. Yeah, so she's got nothing. And actually, Ensha, now that I think about it, I believe Ensha is the guy that was standing next to... Uh, uh, the, the all-knowing guy's office. Yeah, because look, now there's just an item where he was standing. Royal Remains Helm, Royal Remains Armor, Royal Remains Gauntlets, and Greaves. Is that any better than the stuff that I'm wearing? Let's see real fast. Interesting. It's not actually better, at least in terms of the chest. What about the gauntlets or not? Uh, the pants or not. That's very, it's very interesting to me. I don't know why I thought that that set was better than it apparently is. It's a cool, it's a cool helm though. Alright, what do you got to say? Uh, okay, so he, one, two, three, so it's still just all about, oh wait, about Ensha. There we go. Oh, my apologies for that nasty business. Ensha got rather ahead of himself, it seems, as his master. I'd like to express my regret, but now, Ensha is slain and gone, finished, forevermore. Ah, yes. By way of apology, allow me to tender some advice in regard to the half of the secret medallion you possess. Find the Albinoric woman. She hides in a cave to the west of the Laskia ruins, which jut from the mist-shrouded lake of Leonia. She knows the location of the medallion's counterpart, I'm sure. We already talked to her, so... Ah, uh, that's done. Find the Albinoric woman. She hides in a cave. So she knows the location. Okay, so I think he keeps that dialogue for a long time about the secret medallions, but that's done. Because that was Latena, and we've already talked to her and, and got her information and everything. The information she's got. And then, I don't think I have... I have no bell bearings... Nothing that I want to purchase right now. Let's go progress some other dialogue real fast. I think that Nefeli Lu is here, just at the bottom of, of the stairs, like, leading onto the first floor. Or the basement, or whatever. Uh, I don't think I have any prayer books. Oh, I do have one. Yeah, I know, it's a work of heresy. Thanks so much, appreciate it. I forgot, I got that a long time ago. Uh, I don't know what that added. Oh, yeah, I think it added these. So, the lightning spear and the honed bolt. 
Neither of which I can currently use because of my faith. I have one, one more level into faith and I can use that, though. Cool. I don't really care about any of those right now. Okay, he doesn't have anything. This guy, he's back from Liurnia. Ah, you again, is it? The recusant sent a lackey. Can you believe they invited me to join them? Now, after what they did, I can scarcely believe it myself. Did they think me a fool? You might be surprised to learn I took them up on the offer. Then they only had to ask. The location of the recusant hideout. It's on Mount Gelmir, found off the old road that leads west from the town of Windmills. That's where they hide. The manor on the peak. Just you wait, wretched recusants. You'll rue the day you insulted my name by laying hands on Lanya. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood, after all. It's on Mount Gelmir, found off the old road that leads west from the town of Windmills. That's where they hide. The manor on the peak. Just you wait. Red tail of okay, so I think he'll just repeat that now. That's, where they just you wait. That's it. Okay, so we should be good with him until we get to Mount Gelmer, and we'll, we'll encounter him again in Volcano Manor. Ah, and my examination is complete. Here's the knife print back, with my thanks. Now I have a fairly good idea who performed the rite upon the blade. The person who orchestrated the Night of the Black Knives, Luna Princess Rani. One of the children born to King Consort Radigan and his first wife, Ranala. Demigod and sister to General Radan and Praetor Rikard. Hers was the name I discovered in the imprint. Truly, you have my thanks. But if I might be so bold, I would like to ask something more of you. If Rani truly is the one who plotted that fateful night, then she should bear the curse mark of destined death somewhere upon her flesh. I would like you to procure it for me. And then all will be laid bare. I will have the answers I have sought for so long. I don't have any new skills? I have some idea of Rani's potential whereabouts. There's a manor to the north of the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. It is the familial home of the Karian royals from whom Rani descends. There's been talk of the old royals' vassals gathering there in recent years. Rani's whereabouts since the shattering are a well-kept secret. She hasn't been seen even once, but I suspect she might have returned to the manor in which she was born. I'm afraid there's something I must tell you. Do you know of those who live in death? The very notion of life in death defies the Golden Order. By Dee's account, these defiled fiends must be expunged. But truth be told, I seek the curse mark to save them. You may find this peculiar. But I discovered something in my examination of the Knight of the Black Knives. These souls have committed no offense. They have every right to life, only they happen to touch upon a flaw in the Order. Yes, indeed. If Dee knew what drives me now, he would surely boil over with rage. Or perhaps he would even feel some pity. But no need to fret. None of that will come to pass. I can tell a good lie when I need to. He's right outside the door. He may have heard about that. If Luna Princess Rani truly is the one who plotted that fateful night, then she should bear the curse mark. Would you okay. be to she may have returned to the manor, the royal Karian residence to the north of the academy. Okay, so I think he'll if just Luna keep Princess Rani, then she should bear the curse. Would you be willing to procure? She may have returned to the royal Karian. Okay. So that so that then is where we encounter her next is way up here behind Carrion Manor. Uh, I think that one of one of these towers, I, I think that it's this one, or actually it might be this one is hers. One of, one of these ones up here is hers, so we'll encounter her there. Does D have anything to say now? I don't think so. I'm just wondering since he was just talked about there, if he'd have anything to say. What about you? She does not have anything to say. I don't need to tune any spirits. Anything else to say? Strength and armament. Uh, okay, so he does not have anything, and I still can't. Still need smithing stone fives, which I currently have zero of. Uh, and then let me see about Fia real fast if she has anything else to say. I don't think she does. I am pleased. Would you like a blessing? Would you like? 
I'm not going to because I don't know. I never remember exactly when I need to let her do it again because I don't. I don't want her to sap any more of my health. Is the thing. So I try to do it at the right time. Here she is. Ah, you. Please, leave me be. It's pathetic, I know, but I. I need to think. Ah, you. Please, it's pathetic, I know, but. That's it. Ah, you. Please, it's pathetic, I. Okay, so then the next time we're here, I should actually be able to give her those those ashes, like the Stormhawk ashes or whatever. But apparently, right now, that is not an option from the fact that she just kind of said, uh, go away. So anyway, that's going to wrap us for today. This has been kind of a long episode, but we made it through a decent amount. So tomorrow, we will continue our way past the four belfries up along here. And uh, potentially even make it all the way to, to Carrion Manor. We'll see. And we still got to go. There's still some water stuff down here that we got to do. Uh, everything on this side is done. So it'll basically just be like this water leading down to about here that still needs to be done. So it's going to wrap us for today. If you enjoyed the episode, I would highly appreciate it if you would leave a like, maybe a comment, and also hit subscribe. So thanks for checking out today's episode, and I will talk to you tomorrow.